everybody! <laughs> Yay, hi! I'm Loopy. I'm excited! It's the first day of The Last Jedi! It is released! It was released at midnight, so it is awesome. I'm excited. I have officially gone offline for the most part. I'm going to check Twitter, the feature Twitter on page to see if I can find my tweet. I am going to, um, I might check Facebook, but I'm doing my, if I have any alerts, but I am doing my best to avoid social media or anything that says the Last Jedi reviews, Last Jedi spoil. I was okay with reading the plugged in review because that was, really gave nothing away and, but I am insanely avoiding anything else to do with the Last Jedi. It's gonna be so hard because I have to do it for today and tomorrow, and thankfully today I'm going to be writing, so that will keep me off my social media for a while, so. Um, oh, I, had, I didn't finish putting my room back together. I am upset, to say the least. Um, I'm sure many of you know, if you're like me, the FCC voted to repeal the net neutrality things, which means that internet providers can now slow down internet, can block certain sites, can charge, do all this horrible stuff to people. Now, it really bugs me because I've talked about how important education is for my family, and I just watched a video that stated that there are like thousands, millions of kids here in the United States that don't have regular access to internet, which is a bad thing because more and more these days, and this started when I was in high school and college, teachers are assigning work, reports, homework, all this stuff that can only be done with the internet. And that is, these kids are now falling behind because of this. So now these net neutrality laws are going to make it harder for those kids who already have limited access to the internet to even access what limited access they have. It also upsets me as a fan fiction writer because now it's like, um, what does this mean for me as a fan fiction writer? I don't think it means a great deal, but this is kind of something I do. I love it. I love sharing my work with everybody. So it makes me, I'm actually at this point, I'm actually looking into seeing how I can become a freelance writer to work on my writing skills so that I can maybe become a professional writer one day. But it, it's, it's insane. And it's like, wait a minute, all this horrible stuff is happening. They want to pass a, a tax bill that only gives cut tax breaks to the wealthy and the elite and big corporations. I mean, written in, there's actually a thing written into this tax bill that would give a tax cut to people who own like six private planes. Why? They, they can afford to pay more taxes if they can afford to have private planes. So, and instead everybody's like, oh, this tax cut will be good for everyone. It's not gonna be good for everybody. My mom will lose money. I will lose money. My brother will lose money. It's not gonna be good for people like me. We're the people who are going to have to pay more so that the rich can pay less. That's not fair. So it seems like everything that's been awesome about the United States is just getting rolled back. I mean, now we have politicians who are openly saying, oh, the best time in the United States was the 1800s. Like, what? That is, like, not even funny. And so I have even, I have admitted this, I have looked at immigration to Canada. So I have looked at it seriously looked at it because I'm like, I'm not sure. I love the United States. I love that fact that I was born here. I love the freedom. But if this is what it's going to be like in the foreseeable future, I'm not sure I want to be here, which sounds horrible, but it's true. I mean, how much longer until what if he find what if the government finds a way that they can start censoring a lot more stuff? It's like, what? No. So I don't know. I don't want to think about it. It just makes me sad and my brother's upset about it and he's really upset because one of our uh, elected officials from here in Michigan has come down really in favor of supporting this. And it's like, no, that's not great. It's bad enough that um, we're trying to schedule as much as we can because I might be, my brother and I might be losing our health coverage in March and have to find a different option. So I actually just scheduled a um, eye doctor's appointment for next Wednesday because I haven't been since 2015, so I'm due for one. And then I'm going to try to schedule a physical in January. And I'm doing that next Thursday. So, because I might actually be losing my healthcare coverage in March. So, <laughs> and that's not nice because then you had to pay like an over $600 fine. And it's like, what? I can't afford to pay for healthcare. I obviously can't afford to pay a $600 fine. So, 
It's nuts and insane, but let's focus on the positive. Today is the opening day of Star Wars Last Jedi. It was so cool. I was bad. I stayed up late last night and I watched Stephen Colbert because he had Adam Driver on. And it was funny because he's like, here, I know how, because he's like, you, he's like, the Mark Hamill came on, because usually when people come on to promote a movie, they usually bring a clip from the movie, something from the trailer, a scene that's in the trailer, something like that. Star Wars, they can't do that. <laughs> Because they have like the strictest NDA, for those of you who don't know, NDA stands for Non-Disclosure Agreement, which is something a lot of actors sign to say they will not give away parts of the film, plot points, and in Star Wars, these NDAs are notoriously strict. Like, you can't give away anything. I think Kelly Marie Tran actually said when she got her part in Star Wars, she actually lied to her parents about what she was doing. She told her parents while she was in England that she was actually in Canada and bought maple syrup to show them that she was in Canada until she could actually tell them that she was in Star Wars. Like when you get into a Star Wars movie, you actually can't even tell your family you're filming a Star Wars movie for I think like two or three months. So it's like the strictest NDA in the world. So when they go to promote Star Wars movies, they can't really talk about the Star Wars movie. They can't bring a clip to show. So it's like, what are you supposed to talk about? They're supposed to be promoting Star Wars, but they can't really talk too much about Star Wars. So what do you do? So last week, it was funny with Mark Hamill. He did like this whole thing about what Luke's doing. Let's do the Katina. He's back on Tatooine. I'm like, really? Seriously? Well, he did do that in ROJ. So, but with that, John Reed's like, aha, I know a way. And he brought out a Ray doll and a Kylo Ren Kylo Ren and Ray action figures from The Last Jedi, and he's like, let's have a fight. And so they're fighting, he's like trying to get Adam Driver to <laughs> give up some juicy details about the movie, and he's like, who are Ray's parents? He's like, Steve Michael Bears. <laughs> it was funny, go check it out, you guys. It is so funny seeing him, seeing Adam Driver, it's like, it's like seeing Ian McDermott, who played Palpatine in the movies. Palpatine is like the creepiest, nastiest, worst guy ever. And then you see Ian McDermott and you're like, why do I hate him so much in the movies? He's actually this nice, silly, goofy guy. He's like the nicest guy on the planet. It's like, aw. Oh, wait, he, he plays the most revolting character, but he's so nice. And it's like Adam Driver plays this character who is so serious and bent and like totally. And then Adam Driver's just like, ah, yeah, good. He's so soft-spoken. It's like, oh, my gosh. I, I guess it's, like, insane, and I guess that's one of the reasons I think maybe playing a villain is a little bit harder than playing a bad guy. It's because, one, to play be a good villain, you have to really reach and deep down into yourself and find that darkness that we all have and use that to emote and play this villain. And then usually the people who play who are the best at playing the bad guys are the ones who are just, like, really silly and goofy or soft spoken. I mean, look at Ray Park. He played Darth Maul, and I have never met a sillier guy. I've never seen a silly... I've never met him. I would love to meet him. I've never met a sillier guy... Seen a sillier guy than Ray Park. Like, at this year's Star Wars celebration, with his panel, he came on acting like a monkey. It's like, what the... Huh? It's, like, insane how the people who play the bad guys are the ones who are the most silly. So it's like, ah, it's fun, so... I'm excited. I can't wait to go see The Last Jedi Sunday at 2.15. And I'm like, okay, I actually posted on Facebook. I actually said, okay, I'm technically going offline. And what's really fun is the 501st created two pictures for people to save and then post to say that they weren't going to be online because they're going to The Last Jedi and they don't want to have any spoilers. <laughs> so the one says, I am going offline. I'm offline because I'm going to see... The Last Jedi. And the other one says, I'm offline because I am trooping. Because a lot of them are going to go in costumes and go do troop events and stuff like that. So I did the offline one and I actually explained, okay, I'm still going to be online, but not as much as you people think. I'm just going to be checking, like, checking to see if I had any notifications. Like, I will log on to Facebook, check the, go look at the little globe icon, see if anybody's, like, commenting and messaging. Okay, nobody's, but bye. Just like with Twitter, I'm really going on because to see if my tweet is featured. So... And I probably won't even log on to Twitter. So um, Instagram I might do Sunday because I'll probably post a, this is me before going to see The Last Jedi. This is me after. <gasps> so I'm excited. I can't wait to go see The Last Jedi. Like I am uber, 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 uber excited. The worst part is, is I play Old Republic and I'm going to go on tonight. <laughs> and 
and I might have to turn off my chat log because there's probably going to be... I'm on Coruscant right now, and on Coruscant there's usually about a hundred, over 100 people playing on Coruscant at the same time, so... I will probably have to turn off my chat log to avoid seeing any spoilers for The Last Jedi. That's the worst part about playing a Star Wars game with a bunch of other Star Wars fans. Like, no, don't tell me. I haven't seen it yet. All I know is that uh, the one review I read for Plugged In says it's the best Star Wars movie since the originals. A lot of, I've heard, seen other snippets saying it's the best. I did say one video on YouTube, which I did not watch, where the title literally claimed it the worst Star Wars movie ever. And I'm like, yeah, no, not by a long shot. So I'm excited. I can't wait to go see it. I think my brother's excited. It's like, I keep seeing the commercials and stuff, and it's like, ha, 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 he, ma, mama, ha, and I really want to go see it so much. So I am just like, I am now officially two days away from going to go see The Last Jedi. I could not be more pumped or excited, and I need to, um, Flippy flippy my advent calendar. I love this thing. This is like the best investment. I think it was like $13. But it has turned out to be the best investment ever because now instead of spending money every year getting a chocolate advent calendar, I can just flippy flippy box. So I love it. It is so cute. See, I'll pull it down. So you guys could see a better look. See? I love it. So, yep, so I'm doing my eyes check tomorrow. I have decided, okay, I with my insurance, they cover my exam and then they will cover frames up to, I think, $28. So, if it's over $28, I have to pay for the frames for myself, which I hated because I didn't want to get crummy frames and then I found, which you've seen me wear a couple times. Then I found these, and these were $18. The frames were $18, so these are the glasses I got. And like with every time you go get an eye exam, apparently you have to get new glasses because your prescription might change. So these are the ones I have right now. This is why I don't wear them because of the glare. My mom, everybody, I had really ugly metal ones before this, and I hated the metal ones, so I was so happy to get plastic ones. And my mom, <laughs> a couple of years ago, when I started wearing glasses, I love Hello Kitty and Hello Precious Moments, and you guys have probably seen this. Um, I went to Frankie Muth, and they had some exclusive Hello Kitty figurines, and this is one of them. And I loved it because it is Hello Kitty, and she looks like my personality. She's wearing beret. I have berets. I love my pink beret. She has a little bow. I love wearing, like, little cute hair bows and clips in my hair. She's got a vest on. She's got a little dress on. I love dresses and skirts. She's got little... Mary Jane's on, which are my favorite style of shoe, but I can never find them. And she's holding a book, and I am a huge bookworm. So I loved the glasses. I wanted geek glasses just like this. I actually, um, when geek glasses became a thing, I went to go see a movie in 3D, and I brought the 3D glasses home, and I said, hey, Mom, I want dork glasses. So my mom took my 3D glasses and punched out the things, and that was my dork glasses. But then I got real glasses, but they weren't these. So um, I wanted glasses like this. And then I went to get my eyes examined in 2015, and I found these. And I put these on, and I turned it, because I had seen them when I went to schedule my appointment, fell in love with them. My mom came with me, and I showed her these glasses. I put them on, and my mom's exact words were, oh my gosh, you look like Hello Kitty. Like my Hello Kitty figurine. Because I was also wearing my beret at the time, so. She told me I looked like my figurine. So I really like this style of glasses. They're the best suited for my face. But I think I'm going to get them in a different color because, oh, I covered up my bed. Well, right here, you can probably, ah, uh, really bad camera angle. There we go. Yeah. My glasses are a dark purple color, which when I leave them, which during the day it's not so bad. But if I set my glasses down on my bed at night with either my Christmas tree or my bed, my lamp on, I can't find my glasses when they're on my black comforter. Or even when the comforter slipped over and the print slides out. I can't find them because they're that dark. So I literally lose my glasses on my bed. <laughs> and not in a good way. I've sat on them. So um, if I get new glasses frames, which I think I'm going to do, I want the same style. But I want a style like this. 
I want them in plastic, but I think I'm going to try to get them in a little bit of a lighter color. One of the reasons I got this is purple is my favorite color, and also they would go with anything. But I'm thinking now might be a good time to maybe think about getting a lighter color. So, And for those of you wondering, it's not really a major eye issue. What I have is when I was little and I went to the eye doctor for the first time, they told my parents I had astigmatism. So I wore glasses regularly from kindergarten through fifth grade. And then... And I was also nearsighted, so we already knew that. But then my eyes apparently, like, plateaued or leveled out or something. And the doctors told my parents they didn't really think glasses were necessary. So I stopped wearing them. And then I think when I was in 7th and 8th grade, I said, oh, my eyes are getting bad. I'm, I found my glasses, my last pair of glasses that I got. And I put them on, and they gave me a major headache. So I stopped wearing glasses altogether. And we had no insurance, so vision insurance, which I can't believe is separate. So I didn't go to the eye doctor for many, many years. And I noticed, especially in college, when I would sit toward the back of the class or even when I sat in the front of class, I was having trouble seeing stuff. And I was doing a lot of computer work, too. So I was like, I think my eyes are getting bad, but I didn't think anything of it. The doctor just said my eyes were fine. And so I just went, yeah, they're fine. And then I went to Marquette. And one of my classes, Art History of Japan and the West, I went and I sat in the front row and our professor did lecture, had the most boring professor. I actually fell asleep twice in his class, which I had never done before. Um, he did PowerPoint on the screen, and I was sitting right in the front of the class, near the door. So I should have been able to see the screen. I could barely see the screen. I'm like, that's not good. So I leave Marquette. I come home. I go. So I get my eyes get irritated. I go to see a doctor one day because my eyes got really irritated and they were swelling up and my mom freaked out because um, my eyes get, because my eyes get plugged really easily. The tear ducts get plugged and they just swell up. And so I went to get a check to make sure it wasn't an infection or anything. They tested my vision and this was right after I came home from Marquette. And Marquette, they said my vision was fine because they tested it at the clinic I went to. However, the clinic, I was standing... The door with the vision test was right where my window was. I was standing right here. So literally, I was like three like three or four feet away from the vision test, at least five. And I was doing this during that. And I was leaning forward. And the nurse didn't say anything about it. And so I went to go get my eyes checked at the doctor's office. The eye vision is a little bit further away. And they told me I couldn't lean forward. And the guy's like, you need to get your eyes checked. I'm like, really? Because they told me at the clinic I went to, my vision was 2020. He's like, it's not 2020. So I went, got my eyes checked in 2013 and was told I am, I was nearsighted in one eye, had astigmatism in the other, which is what they told me when I was little. I'm like, okay. Got glasses, loved my glasses, could see so much better. I don't like wearing them when it's like this out and I don't wear them when I go to places like a zoo. Or when I'm out walking, what I usually do if I'm walking to like a store or something, I put them in my purse and I put them on when we get to the store. If we're going out when it's cold out and I'm walking, I usually don't wear them. So, but I have to wear them whenever I'm really doing something. This I don't do because as you guys said, saw the reflection is awful. So, and then I went back in 2015, which is when I got those pair and they said, oh, you have astigmatism in both your eyes and you're nearsighted in both your eyes. So I'm like, seriously? So, um, and I'm worried it's getting slightly worse because I think it was last night I had my computer on and my computer started updating. And so usually, and I did not have my glasses on. And my computer was sitting right here on the floor since there's really no room for me to have like a table or anything. I just, unless I sit on the bed. So I usually just sit on the floor. So my computer was right about here where my foot is. And I was standing, I think I was get, yeah, starting to get ready for bed. I was standing over here. So you can see it's really that, that far. But either it's because I was standing up and because of how my computer was sitting on the floor, I could barely read the screen as it was updating. I was like, I shuffled over here and I was like, oh, it's updating. So I'm worried that my eyes might have gotten slightly worse. But it is what it is. Hopefully they're not too bad. I'm just like, I'm just happy I got in next week. 
So I'll have more than enough time to get my eyes checked. And if I get any frames, have the new frames and lenses come in. And then I will be good. And there's tape on my baby blanket. Funny story. It's like before I leave, there's a very good reason why I have blankets covering the head and the foot of my bed. It's because I think one or two years ago, I almost got my head stuck. My bed actually used to lay this way against my wall, and I had pictures. And the pictures kept on that wall right there, and the pictures fell down, and I went to get it, and the easiest way for me was to stick my arm through one slat, and then I put my head through the other, and I think I nearly squished my head trying to get out. It hurt so much, I didn't go to sleep that night. My aunt called me stupid, silly. So now, and my mom realized I actually have a smaller head, so now, to make my mom happy, to avoid doing something like that, even though I learned my lesson, I have blankets at the head and the foot of my bed, also because I will sit my foot through the ends. And that stops me, so. This is an afghan my grandma Sharon knitted for, made for me. She had a ton of leftover thread, so she used all this leftover thread and made this massive afghan in all sorts of colors. And this is a baby blanket, another relative made for me. So this is my, literally my baby blanket that they brought me home from the hospital and so that was handmade for me <laughs> too. So um, both of these are blankets that were made for me by members of my family. I think this one was my Aunt Donna? No, I don't remember who made this one. It might have been my Grandma Lex, but. So I have blankets from my family, which is nice. I have a quilt my grandma made for, my um, Aunt Lenny made that my grandma didn't like, my grandma gave me. Um, this is a quilt think one of my aunts one of my aunts made. The Santa doll you see all the time. That was something one of my aunts made. <laughs> um, like literally people wonder why I'm so into sewing and crafting and stuff. Well, most of the women in my family and some of the men, they are they have they are or they were big crafters. I have like a couple pieces of jewelry that were actually made by my great great uncle he actually made a clay snowman for me and this uncle had arthritis so i have like a ton i don't think i have the anymore oh this this was made this is a necklace that was made by my godfather and i've shown you guys this before i might actually wear this to um the movie monday night sunday night not monday night so this was made to, for me by this was made by my, um, my godfather. I have a ton of stuff. And when I was little, my parents loved it when I was really little because they very rarely had to buy me clothes because both my grandmothers made me almost all my clothes. I'm not kidding. Like, all my nice dresses I used to wear when I was little, those were made by my grandma Sharon. Like, she would make me rompers and shorts and stuff, and she made my Halloween costume one year, which was a bride, and she made me a ballerina outfit so my grandmas when I was younger they used to make clothes and for me for me especially my grandma Sharon made me a ton of clothes because for many many years until I was eight I was the only grandchild well until I was three I was the only grandchild well okay until I was eight I was her only granddaughter that she saw on a regular basis because my cousins Monica and Christine lived no not Monica Valerie and Christine lived out on the East Coast, so she, I don't think has ever seen them. And my Aunt Chris had yet to have any of her kid, had her first kid when she was like eight, when I, no, I was eight, so I think. I remember how much older I am than Jessie. But for many years, I was Grandma Sharon's only little girl, so I spent a lot of time at my grandma's house, and my grandma made me a lot of clothes. <laughs> My grandma spoiled me rotten. In fact, it was my grandma and my one other aunt who took me down to SeaWorld when I was five in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, so I was, I, was, I was very much spoiled by my grandma Sharon. And I kind of miss those days. I miss her a lot. I, don't, I should email her more and I don't, but I miss her and her house not that good. I haven't seen, I actually haven't seen my grandma Sharon in, I want to say three or four years. Oh, and longer than that, the last time I saw her, I had just started at Delta, and I remember it, because the night we went to go see her, I crashed my dad's car into a light pole, and I broke the tie rod. <laughs> so that, so it's been like almost maybe five or six years. 
since I last saw my grandma Sharon and before that I saw her when I got confirmed because she came up for my confirmation party. So I was 14 then. So I was about 19 or 20 when I saw her last and now I'm 29. So it's been a while since I've seen her. So I've actually seen my aunt that lives in Kentucky with her kids. I've seen my aunt and those kids too, but I haven't seen, um, I haven't seen my grandma in years, so I, I really miss my grandma. Some of my best memories are of playing at her house. She lived in town, and she had this cat named Snowball, and apparently, according to family heads, and I used to carry him around by his tail, and that stupid cat wouldn't bite me or scratch me. And, and when I went down to see her in Kentucky, because I was heartbroken. I was like about eight or nine when she moved down to Kentucky and I was absolutely heartbroken when she moved away and <clears throat> she moved in June and like at the end of July my aunt's like you want to go down to Kentucky with me and I went down to Kentucky and I got to see my grandma and my aunt and my cousin and I was and my uncle and I was so happy and she still had Snowball and that stupid cat whenever I went to her house I would sit down and that stupid cat would jump up on the chair and just start looking at me like crazy. And I really miss her. I miss talking to her and I miss her hugs. She she was she had a really wicked sense of humor when my brother and I were younger. She tricked us into eating cow tongue. Because my brother and I were notoriously picky eaters. And she tricked us eating the cow tongue. And she didn't tell us until after we ate it and said it was so good that we ate cow tongue. So she was she was funny. And she wasn't perfect. She made a lot of mistakes. I mean, my mom was raised by her grandparents, not my, her mom. But I don't know. It's just now I'm getting older. And with my uncle, his health issues. And now I'm suddenly realizing, oh my gosh, I lost. My one great aunt, my grandma, I don't, my grandma Letts is gone. My cousin just passed away and I have an uncle. I, my dad lost his oldest sister just last year. So I lost my oldest aunt on my dad's side of the family. And, and now it's like, oh my gosh, my uncle's in the, going to have to go in a nursing home because my one aunt can't take care of him. And now I'm like, oh my gosh. My grandma has been having major health issues for years, and I haven't seen her. And my mom has seen her. My mom got to go down to Kentucky when my um, one cousin graduated a couple years ago. But I don't know. I'm just realizing that um, I'm just suddenly remembering all the stuff, all what I used to do with my family, and it's just making me sad. And I shouldn't be sad. I need to be happy. Okay, sad part is over. It's time to be happy and think about the fact that I'm going to go see The Last Jedi this weekend with my brother. I'm going to spend some time with him. It's always awesome spending time with my brother because our personalities are completely different. <laughs> I'm like, not even kidding you. He is so serious. He can be so serious and stoic. And I'm like, wee! I'm an airhead. And I probably am an airhead. So I'm very loud and rambunctious. And my brother's like, nah, 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 I don't care. So our personalities are completely different, but we oh, I always love spending time with him because he was for many years my best friend. So I I always look forward to spending time with him, especially going to the movies with him because he is so stoic. It is so hard for him to like react to anything. So he will just like be sitting there and just going. And sometimes I will just look over at him. So I know he's really into a movie and enjoying it when he's like, when his face just lights up or he gets like, oh my gosh, like when we went to go see Iron Man, he was like, <laughs> so awesome so I'm excited I can't wait to go see the last Jedi so no more sad stuff today I think we are going to Speedway soon yay hot cocoa and it snows so there's a fresh layer of snow on the ground but it is saddening to think about that it's supposed to warm up next week and Thursday it's supposed to rain and be like 30 something and I'm like no there goes all our snow for Christmas but my mom might let herself have a four-day weekend, which will be awesome because she has the 23rd, 20, because she's looking at it. I'm like, yay, please, mommy, have a four-day weekend, because that would be so awesome. My mom has not had, like, a full four-day holiday weekend with us in forever. So I'm like, yes, please have a four-day weekend. Like, literally, the only time she normally gets Christmas Eve off is when it's on her day off. Christmas Eve is on Sunday this year. She's taking Christmas Eve off. I don't care. She's not working. She needs to be home with us, okay?
I want my mom home on Christmas Eve. I don't want her at the store. So. Yes, I can't believe it. Today is the last Jedi. I go see it Sunday. And then in two weeks, it's Christmas! Yay, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, can you tell some? I'm gonna get going. Oh my gosh, it's 30 minutes long. Okay, I'm already sorry for the depressing stuff, but okay. So I'm gonna get going, stay safe, stay sane, you guys. If you're going out to see The Last Jedi, please remember, don't see, don't hear, don't tell. We don't wanna hear any spoilers for The Last Jedi. So please, if you go see it and you post a review, like I will be doing next Monday, please keep it spoiler free for those of us who have yet to see it. When it's January, when it's like late January, then you can spoil it. <laughs> but um, until then, please post no spoilers. I don't want to hear anything. So I will post my review spoiler free next Monday. So stay safe, stay sane, especially when you're going out to go see The Last Jedi. Have fun, you guys. This is the Star Wars weekend. It is awesome. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. I'm sending you all lots of love, hugs, and prayers. And since today is the first day of The Last Jedi, may the Force be with you always. Bye.